this. If that's uh, too much material for that hook to sink it, then it's it's gonna float. All right. I always tie on gummies, gummagatsu hooks. Is just particular size you like, or is it depends on this fly, conditions of what you're chasing? This fly, I almost always tie on a one because everything, everything will eat this. Everything. So, an SC15. What's that? Is that a gummagatsu SC15? B10S finger. Here. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are great hooks. That's. Yeah, pass them around. I would usually tie this with a white thread, but I'm going to tie it with black just to show you how to hide that thread in there. See, that's tied with a black thread, and that's almost all white material, and you can't you can't see it. You can pass that around if you want to. If you want a closer look at. It. What is this called? Well. A fly. <laughs> a fly. A fly. It's uh, based off an EP bait fish, Enrico, I can't even say it, Enrico Poglacio fibers. Uh -huh. It's a, it's a synthetic fiber. It kind of looks like a tiny pan fish or a small shad. <clears throat> yeah, I tie, I'll show you what we do here. I, I try to make it kind of match a thread fin shad. It's got a little purple flash in there. And uh, keep in mind too, I don't put a lot of flash in anything I use because most of the water I'm fishing is going to be just gin clear water. You put too much flash in it, those bass will come look at it and then they'll just turn on it. And they're they're gone. You know, they're not interested. Where on the Brazos do you find gin clear water? <laughs> <laughs> most of it where I fish is do you? yeah. It's uh, especially you get into a little bit. You get into. Uh, Late winter, early spring, that water is just so clear huh. down there. And Joe, I missed the beginning. What's the primary material? Primary materials for this are EP fibers, which is this stuff here. Okay. A little bit of bucktail, and then just a little bit of crystal flash here. E EP fibers? What Enrico is it? Puglisi? Yeah. Yeah, Enrico, it's a guy's name. Puglisio? Puglisio. <laughs> there you go. So it's kind of like an, uh, an artificial bucktail? Yeah. Eh, similar. <coughs> similar. Similar. Artificial hair. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we'll start off with just the, let me get all the stuff out here. And this stuff can get messy too. My wife has fits when she comes in my tying room. After I've tied up a dozen or so of these, she just. Oh, my <laughs> wife won't go in our my tying room. <laughs> it looks kind of like a. Chicken coop that somebody <laughs> tossed a grenade into. I like to take these uh, these buck, this bucktail off this end of the tail too because they won't you know they won't curl up on you like uh, you know, like deer hair will do. Not a lot, just a little bit to put in that tail. And if y'all got any questions while I'm doing this, please shoot. I'm used to sitting at my time bench. Drinking a Dos Equis with my dog watching me while I do this. So. <laughs> what kind of dog you got? Uh, I've got a short-haired pointer. You know, just, he doesn't contribute much in the way of hair? Oh, no, no. He doesn't have much hair, that's for sure. <laughs> He's pretty thin in the hair department. So how long was that? But he... Uh, He's always super interested in anything I'm doing. You know, he just it's about the twice of curious dog. Shank leg. Yeah, yeah. I like to go right back to here. That's kind of my measurement on my tail, right here, on this fly. I tie some a lot bigger, but this pattern that's like the perfect size. I can get anything to eat it pretty much. Tie your bucktail in. I'll put a little bit of flash in there on that tail. Just maybe about four mm -hmm. strands of that. Do you bury your flash or you I try to keep it kind of those. neutral color? Uh, I'll, I'll keep the neutral color in the tail. I'll put some purple in the back of this one. Okay. You can see. You can kind of see it. That just kind of looks like that thread thin shad. has got that purple kind of running down the back.
This is a really good fall pattern when you get bass that are just schooling up and feeding on shad. fibers just like I was saying you got to be real careful on how much you use or you'll have a fly that will just float it's useless when I first started using it it was hard to convince myself that I wasn't tying it too thin that's really all you need and you'll quarter that Joe, do you catch uh, white bass with this also, or Absolutely. primarily black bass? White bass, black bass, striper, they'll all eat it. If it eats a shad, it'll eat this. I even caught a carp on one not too long ago. <laughs> I was shocked. Anybody tells you that carp aren't meat eaters, or they are. The ones on the Brazos tend to be anyway. What's your favorite stretch of the Brazos? Uh, you know, it can change <laughs> day to day, but uh, there's a stretch down close to Waco that if I could fish anywhere in Texas, when it's at its right height, right flow, where I like it, that's where I would want to be. So below Whitney? Yeah, yeah, down below Whitney, down close to uh, Golson. Is that, that near that uh, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, put in? Where it close to where it used to be? Yeah, that's that's. Uh, they didn't renew their lease on that place down there. They did not. So you can't use it anymore. Nope. Last time I called Jack down there, the property owner, he had told me he was going to let me keep using it. And last time I called him, he what happened? Anybody? I don't know. I think I think he wanted more than what they were paying on the lease, and the state didn't want to pay it. I don't know. But we. Uh, that's one of the places we've lucked into getting some private property. See, this stuff is just a mess. <laughs> and it's called EB, Easy e Baker, EB Fiber? EP. 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 Yeah. Oh, what color is that? This is, what do they call this? It's kind of like a polar bear, what I would call it. I think they call this uh, bait fish belly or something. That's the right one. And, uh, also, this stuff is fairly expensive, but if, have y'all uh, y'all seen uh, the uh, Fly Tires Dungeon yeah, online? Yeah. They've got something called Congo hair. I have a lot of it. It's home. the same stuff. Yeah. I've got a lot more of it than I have this actually. I make but, uh, dumping brushes out of it. Yeah, it's cheap and it's it's good stuff. That's typically what I buy, not this EP fiber. This stuff might have a little bit better quality to it. It doesn't seem like it, uh, you know, over, over time, a fl fly in a fly box with that uh, Congo hair will seem like it'll want to curl. This stuff doesn't do that as bad, but other than that, it's just as good and a whole lot cheaper. I don't know how uh, that guy uh, makes money. Yeah, I don't either. It, I, have you ever ordered any, uh, any hair from him? Your hair or anything? No, they he have, never has any on sale. He, uh, he has when you go to this website and you go to the natural hair department. Yeah, nothing there. I check it all the time, and when they've got those grab bags, I buy it because you get a bag full of hair. Uh -huh. It's ridiculous how much they give you. So you're kind of surrounding the uh, the bucktail with the, the EP. Yes, yes, we'll run it right down that shank, and here in a minute I'll run some right down the side to hide that thread. And does this hook run in its normal orientation or, or point up? Point down. Point down. This will, this fly will run point down. You can you can put a, a weed guard in it. You know I do sometimes if I know I'm going to be fishing some nasty stuff. But I really, for the most part, don't like them. Don't like fishing a weed guard, but sometimes you have to. Do you think it messes up the take? Yes, absolutely. Especially if they're real finicky. If they're you know if they're not just chasing it down and destroying it. If you've got that uh, weed guard in there, and they're just, you know, they're they're liable, you're liable to miss it. You put a little on the bottom there, and then we'll cover that shank up. 
This fly does take a little bit of time to tie. But if I'm uh, if I'm sitting down knowing I'm going to tie a dozen of these, I can knock them out pretty quick. I have to because I, you know, they ends up ten foot at the top of a tree and <laughs> everywhere else. Yeah. Do they hold up pretty well? Can oh, you yeah. catch you know quite a few fish on one fly before they're torn up? Oh yeah, they will. They'll last. Fishing for bass stripers, especially, that it's absolutely necessary to have a big eye on the fly. They, uh, I, I think you're right. I always put an eye on there, unless it's a surface fly. Uh -huh. I always put an eye on there because I, I think you're right. I think they key in on that. I do. Um, I was on YouTube, and I, uh, I told this story about a dozen times. Uh, there was a uh, video of a Finnish fly fisherman fishing in Russia with a Russian guide, and they were the guide was fishing uh, hoppers, and the uh, the Finn said, uh, "How are you?" The, the, he was really catching a lot of fish. Said, How do you do that with those poppers? And he handed him one of the poppers, and on the bottom of the popper he had a great big eye glued on. <laughs> And I thought, you know, when the fish is, looks up, and the, if the fish is dying, it's on its side, all you see is one eye. You know, and sometimes this fly will want to land right on its side, and I've had a lot of strikes. Yeah. Just from it sitting on the surface of the water. Well, I, I tied up a bunch of uh, Chernobyl ants and glued an eye on the bottom. And uh, I was up at Loy Lake, and the brim were hitting it. And they were actually knocking it out of the water into the air, but I couldn't get a hook up because of the uh, uh, they were all short striking. Yeah. So are you alternating colors now, or are you just yes. doing all white? I'm going. Belly of the fish will be white, and the back will be this uh, gray. Uh huh. You and change colors for certain conditions. You know, not really, not on this. Like, like I said, most of the water I'm fishing is clear water year-round, so I don't really have to uh, get into a lot of flash and darker colors. How do you weight that fly? No, just the hook, the hook of the, that fly is the only weight of it. You don't That's put it. a split shot on the nope. line later in the day? Nope. What I do, if I'm, if I'm going to be fishing a lot of current or I need something to sink, I'll just go to a sinking line. That's what I, how I handle it. I don't. I think that fly just looks more natural. If uh -huh. it's got his, I, I want just enough weight to sink it. That's all I want. But uh, if you notice the way I'm folding those fibers to cover up that thread, I'm yeah. pulling them down to the side of it and, and trapping them. That's starting to look like a mess right now, but it'll all come together when we trim it up. Yeah, this stuff, it'll just go everywhere. I'll be covered in it when I get home. Yeah, those uh, rolling tape lint brushes are a good tool for that. For sure. too much of that up while I'm tying it, you don't see that. I, I like to put that flash in, uh, not in between each section, but maybe every, every two sections. In between about every two sections. 
I don't want too much of it in there. Richard, I think we can see it okay, Richard. <laughs> uh, are any of you guys having trouble seeing this? No, it's fine. No, it's good. It's good. We're in good shape, I think. Very invisible. Well, come closer to the front, Richard. You can see it. I guess I need to move the front. <laughs> We can turn off the lights if we need to. Looks good. Take them uh, okay. it's, we're in good shape, I think. So do that one, I'll kind of stand up. And the next one I come in, I'll come into the side. So you kind of alternate on top yeah. and then on the sides? Yeah, to kind of hide all that. Generally what I'll do at home, if I'm going to tie a bunch of these, I'll go ahead and cut a bunch of this up in the lengths I need. Lay it out. And as long as my wife doesn't walk in the room and turn the ceiling fan on, it stays where it should be. <laughs> Which happens a lot. Tried to convince her to learn how to tie so that I don't have to do it anymore. So that <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I, I, I do enjoy it, but it gets to a point where I'm like, okay, I've got to have all this in my fly box for this trip on Saturday. If I could have her at home doing that. Sorry. sides to cover the thread. Anyway, even though the thread's black, you don't see it. Yeah, that's why I use that black thread, just so you could see how I was covering it. Usually I would use a white thread on this. Let's see. So even with the white thread, you don't cover it up, you can still just, you can see it. Joe, there's a question I forgot to yes. ask you. If, would we have your permission to put this on our website for members only? Absolutely. All right. no Thank you very much. Whatsoever. Some of our members who can't make it are, you know, curious yeah. about this and it gives them an opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, I'm all about fly fishing and anybody that has any interest in it whatsoever. And that way, when you become rich and famous, we can sell this for a million dollars. You mean broke and starving. <laughs> See, now I'll go in with I know a dozen ways to tie one of these things from up from very Yeah. And I always enjoy the stage where it looks like it's having a bad hair day. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to get real messy is what it's going to do. Can we trim it up? Not as bad as... Uh, you know, like your air poppers or something like that. It'll definitely look messy. I'll tie a little more flash in there now. I like to keep it pretty sparse on these. I don't like a bunch of it. I don't know how many times I've I've seen that, you know, eight, nine pounder swim up to my fly and I can I can see it in his eyes. He decides it's got too much flash in it. <laughs> and just turns off. That's that's a heartbreaker. That's that's one of the bad things about fishing that clear water. You see so much. You see so many big fish. Especially I have clients down there and they see those big fish and they're like, it's too late. He's already seen us. He is not going to eat. Convincing them to move on, you know, to find another fish it can be difficult. What kind of a kayak do you fish out of? We, uh, we've got a fleet of Diablo Amigos, which are uh, super stable, wide boats. And then we've got uh, a bunch of Hobie Outbacks, too. The Diablos are great downriver boats. 
they you know they don't paddle real well into current or wind. They don't do real well. But that's, and that's why we have the outbacks. They have the uh, that propel driving or the uh, mirage drive in them. Uh -huh. and they're a little trickier to fly fish out of, but uh, they work out real well in the current and wind. It's probably what we'll be going to to all those within the next year or so. People just seem to enjoy them more. You have a pedal drive? Yeah. And it can be tough on us with those down on the river because people tear them up. Yeah, I imagine shallow water yeah. with these pedals. Yeah, if you're not uh, used to using those, yeah, they'll tear them up. But we keep using them. Yeah, I think Hobie has a newer product. It's not for fishing, but there's a stand-up paddle board. It's yeah. a stand-up pedal board. Yeah. Have you seen those? I have. They're, they're very fun. Yeah. I haven't been on one yet, but I've seen them. Yeah, they, they go pretty good. We'll probably go one more before we finish it off. Put an eye on it. Is that uh, like six odd or 140 denier thread? This is 140, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's 140. It's about the smallest thing I'll tie with. Just from a durability standpoint? Yeah. Cover most of that up right there with the eye. Got a horrible up there. <laughs> Let me put a little more on there. That's it. See Oops. there? See there? I should have used the three eye. Yep. Yep. It's all right. We're going to uh, use that UV glue on that head, and it'll cover all that up, anyways. out a little bit before I start trimming it because this stuff when it hits the water it's just going to kind of flare out like that. So see you got a mess now. Trimming this I just kind of like to go see if we can go oh, where did my focus go there. I kind of like to start here just trim down here and then I'll round this out after I make this cut and this cut. <coughs> I mess a whole bunch of these up and they get fished anyways. 
<laughs> You're using serrated scissors for that? Yeah, this is these are the trimming scissors I use for just a when I need to cut a lot, a lot of that synthetic hair, I just pull out my big scissors. trim just to the tip of the hook. About right there. I'll come in and thin that out a little bit. I'm losing my thread there where I broke it. We'll glue that in there. So are you attempting not to cut the bucktail? Just, I trimmed it a little bit, okay. but yeah, I don't want to cut much of that bucktail. I want to leave pretty much what's there. That bucktail will just have a little bit more movement than these EP fibers. Uh -huh. It'll just give it a little more movement. It looks really good in the water. That's something else about fishing clear water. You get a real good look at what everything you're doing looks like. Really doesn't take much more trimming than that, but I get a little OCD on this. That's why I mess so many of them up, I think. <laughs> but that right there will look great in the water. I'll put an eye on it now and call that one good. Joe, what glue do you use? Bug bond. Oh, it's good stuff. I've tried a few different ones and that for the price I pay for it, it's uh it's my favorite. Which brand is it? Bug Bond. I get it through Orbis. Now if I can find my eyes, there we go. This is a uh, seven millimeter eye. Uh, it's about the right size for this fly. got an exacto knife I would usually use to take these off and put them on, but didn't bring it with me. So I'll just have to deal with glue on my fingers. Uh -oh. This is the thick. They've got a thick and a thin. This is a thick. It's what I use to make the heads on these. I'm sorry, this is UV epoxy? Yes, yes, it's UV epoxy. first. Make sure I like it. Do you put the epoxy on top of the eye also or just no. under the eye? Just on I just put it on the fly and then I'll coat the whole the whole head in this here in just a minute. I don't lose too many eyes. Eventually you do, they get beat up and, <laughs> and they're gone, but they stay on pretty good. What so brand like of uh, what brand of light sensitive glue are you using? Uh, Bug Bond. I like to hit that before I make the whole head, just so they don't move on me. Then I'll coat this head. And let me 
if I'm a popsicle, I use these little popsicle sticks to help me spread this epoxy on real good. Are you familiar with the EP uh, micro minnow? Yes. It reminds me a bit yeah. of that. And I've had great luck with that fly. Yeah, it's similar. And all kinds of fish. Get that on there. And I'd like to keep this moving so that I don't end up with it dripping everywhere. Get it where I want it. I want to make sure to get some behind that eye. That's your point where you're going to lose it. Fish gets a tooth back behind there, and pull it off. Try to be careful and not use too much of it. talking loud enough? I get quiet sometimes and don't realize how quiet I'm getting. So, yeah. I'm used to With talking small to myself. Group, you're probably fine. <laughs> I'm used to talking to myself a lot. I don't have to talk very loud. Man. That's it. Yeah, that's a great looking fly. It catches a lot of fish. So you put the eyes on you fish the fish. Fish. What's that? How do you fish this? Nice and slow. It's you know typically in clear water, and it'll just it'll fall slow. I mean it'll it'll almost sit. You want that? Yeah. Just for a second. It'll almost sit right in front of the fish's face, you know, and just 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 fall real slow. Okay. So J Joe, you put the eyes on. Mm -hmm. Was the rest of the building the head to help stabilize? The eyes more? More than anything, it's to keep those eyes on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And did you found, completely surround the head, the yes. top and the bottom? Yes, it's uh it's glued from here. Can you see that? Yeah. From here around the eye to here. Okay. All the way around and all the way to to the eye. You get hey. it behind that eye and it keeps a fish from being able to get its teeth back behind it and pull it off. That's what happens eventually anyway. <laughs> Any reason, make it last. any reason you use the eyes you did instead of like uh, dumbbell eyes? Uh, yeah, I don't want to put dumbbell eyes on it because I don't want it to fall. I want okay. this. I want this fly to just sink, you know, sink or nice horizontal. Just I, it just most of the time in in clear water, I find that entices a bite better than just a, a fast fall. Now, if you're fishing a lot of cover or something, yeah, you might want to put some weight on it and get it to to move a little faster. That's so what I prefer. Short, short, slow strips. Short, slow strips. Long pauses. Cool. And they'll eat it. I like that hook, too. It's got, it's got like a standard muskad saltwater hook, except that it's bronze rather than stainless steel, and it's got a sprout bend rather than a round bend. Yeah, these are, those BS, B10S hooks, stinger hooks, those are great hooks. Over, I tie almost everything on them. I uh, I do use some of the Gamagatsu saltwater hooks on some redfish flies and stuff like that, but for the most part, that right there is what I tie everything on. You know. Good and sharp. Yeah, yeah, it's a good hook. You know, no reason. I haven't found any reason to use anything. Else. <coughs> I did use you know some cheaper hooks, but got to where I would break the tips off of them and everything else. So. Is that dry enough That's to pass around? Oh yeah, absolutely. When, yeah. Just make sure it makes it, it back front. It might be a little tacky. <laughs> It might be a little tacky, but once that light hits it, it's it's pretty dry. Where do you get the light? Uh, through Orvis. I buy a lot of my stuff through Orvis through their. Uh, they have a uh, they call a uh, Friends of the Field program for guides and such, and then we get a pretty decent discount through them. So I try to buy everything That's I can. That's necessary through. at Orvis. <laughs> You're not kidding. It is. They got good stuff, though. You know, if and, yeah. uh, I'm a strong believer in you get what you pay for. And when it comes to fishing in general, that's that's really true. You get what you pay for. But Orvis does have a good guarantee. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, they do. We want to tie another one? I've got, got time? Yeah. yeah. If we got time, I'll tie another one up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just go straight through this one. If you've got any questions while I'm, while I'm going, just stop. You're going to tie the same exact thing again, right? Yeah. That's, I just brought the material for that one fly. Okay, that's fine. You know what? I could tie. I've got a fly I tie out of all bucktail. Yeah, we, we kind of saw that first fly. If you want to change it up a little bit, that'd yeah, be good. Yeah. Now this, let me see. I think I've got everything I can, uh, almost, almost everything. Let me think. Yeah, I don't. But I'm going to go through it anyway so you all know. Because this is pretty neat because the main reason I started tying this fly was because I could do it with just bucktail and uh, a little bit of hackle. But I'll go through it. We'll see what we come up with. What kind of hackle do you need? Just uh, depending on what color fly I'm, I'm tying, you know, different colored hackles I will use. I've got a assortment. I buy most of it comes from that uh, fly tires dungeon, I think. It's just big bulk bags of, oh. of hackle that I use. So. I lose a lot of flies, <coughs> so I I try to uh, skimp on material everywhere I can, yeah. quite honestly. Let's see, I want that. When you're tying flies with bucktail, mm -hmm. you try either faux bucktail or uh, I haven't select craft fur. I, I do tie with. Uh, I've got some redfish flies. I tie with craft fur, but as far as that that faux bucktail, I know people that have tied with it and just didn't like it. So I've never, I've never really messed with it. It's fairly stiff. Yeah. This is real simple, but it's, uh, like I said, I started tying this one because I can do it pretty much just out of bucktail, and it lands really soft. So, you know, spooky fish, it'll, uh, it won't spook them so bad. I'm really missing some things for it, but we'll try. got this tool thing here for my bias and I never use it. I bought it thinking, oh, I'll put my scissors there and I won't lose them anymore. <laughs> never use it. Yeah, I've considered that big wheel several times. Yeah. And then I think about it and I go, yeah, I don't think so. I really want to keep all that. Yes. Okay, here. Trim the ends off of it. We got some seats up here as well. See, I kept that little bit there instead of uh, trimming it off so it kind of flare that out. And I'll pull that back and let it flare out. And I don't really want to get around the end of that like that. I kind of just want to build a dam up right in front of it. It'll flare out for me like that. So 
So are you kind of using the same technique, but with the, the bucktail rather than the EP fiber? Well, kind of, but as I get up closer to this head, it's going to, if you all tied with deer hair, I'm sure, yep. stacked deer hair, it's going to get like that. Because this, this end of this bucktail will kind of flare out for me the same way. But I don't pack it so that it's lighter and it'll actually sink, it won't float. But it's almost like Got stacked. Me. Similar. Off yeah, after I get past this here, that's what I want to do. You just trim it down, and you'll see that there. That's when I need that heavier thread. We're going to get him some feebus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I may not I be able to like do this with this thread. The with the <laughs> we'll cut yeah. the hair before we'll break. Yeah, I may not be able to do this with this thread. Started to bring more stuff and I didn't. So would you normally tie this with white thread? Yes. I'll tie this in uh, several colors though. I've, I've caught redfish off this fly. Of course, redfish will eat almost anything you get close enough to them. Oh, come on. Silly guy that did that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's... I've got to use a dental floss threaders. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, those work real get, well. You get 25 in a pack for $4. I just keep them hanging off my body. See if I can trap all that thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's that thing cost? Uh, when I bought it, it was 50 or 55 bucks. Yes, yeah, I think it's around 75. I lost my hair. What is I? that? The Mark Pettigene bobbin. Oh. My scissors. He also makes a nice whip finish tool. Most uh, of the stuff. Especially for smaller flies, but it's not cheap either. Most of the stuff I buy is Dr. Slick. It's, it's cheap and it's good stuff. Yeah, I like their scissors and I yeah. bought some of their bobbins. Yeah, Doctor Slick. It's good stuff. And it's, it's fairly inexpensive. I really like their braids and scissors. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna try this one more time. If this breaks, then I'll have to go another route. Have you got a pair of this tungsten uh, scissors? I don't think I'm, I want to get there. Just see how. It Really are. I just reach over off Mary Kay's bench when I need to cut wire, use her scissors. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> mine are in pretty good shape. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No. I can't pull that tight enough. So for twenty dollars, Mary came on here that story. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to give up on this one. Not gonna work? Hey, I can't pull that tight enough with that thread without breaking. So what would you do with that? Would you finish it all the way up and then put eyes on it? Yeah, what I would let me tell you what I'd do is I, I really I wish I'd have brought everything I needed for this. This is a really great fly. What I would do is I would I would uh, finish it out. Um, if I wanted it to sink, I'd put dumbbell eyes on it. Typically I don't. And this fly will be uh, 
gosh, I wish I'd have brought everything. We'll see if Do I you put this in? Does it look just like the other one except it's got no. except it's no. all buck tape? No, it'll be bigger. It'll be quite a bit bigger. You see how that's flaring out? Yeah. There? It'll flare out. Hmm. Do you wind up trimming it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll trim it down quite a bit. But uh yeah. Uh, I tell you what, if y'all like the way that was looking, which I don't know how you would, that looks horrible. But uh, I've got a website where I've actually, I think I just took that one off of there. I've got another one. I do a fly of the month. I think I just took this one off of there. But, sorry about that one. So I'll, uh, I'll tie up another one of these. It's about all I can do with what I've got. That uh, resin you use on mm -hmm. that also causes some weight too. Doesn't yeah, it? a little bit. It does a little bit. Thin no, it's uh, it it does put a little bit of weight on the head of that fly, but not a lot. More than anything, it just uh, really <coughs> makes it uh, durable. Yeah, so they yeah. don't pop off the first makes, time you get it. Yeah, yeah, makes it really durable. More than anything, I used to just glue the eyes on and call it good, but. They wouldn't stay on there. Two fish, they were gone. So I started putting that on there. All right. You got to make this a ten-minute tie now. Ten-minute tie? Or we could go to lunch ten uh, dinner ten minutes earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to y'all. Y'all tell me. Your your choice. Your time. If y'all want yeah, me to tie, like the, the first fly. one took almost thirty minutes. Did so it really? We really don't have that. All right. Okay. We want to make one. sure you get fed and have a chance to yeah. okay. unwind right. before you talk. And All right. We'll put it up. Yeah, we saw that. We've got that one on video. So yeah, they're pretty slow out there in the service. They are. <laughs> I've got a. I'm going to confiscate these two. Yeah. 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 people to see them, and we appreciate your donation. We got room so in the office. Thank, Thank you very much.